viewers of the Amber Army YouTube channel, this is Taff on Route and uh, today's away game is Yeovil and uh, in the car with me I've got my good lady Leanne who's hiding, you can just about see the side of her blonde hair, <laughs> there she goes, she ducks, ducks for cover there again and uh, on, 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 on the far left then is uh, Terry Moore, say hello Terry. Hiya mate, hello everybody. And then you've got Jordan Starkey sitting behind me, good man. So uh, we're on a winless run at the moment. Uh, I think it's seven games without a win. It could be more than that, actually. No, it's eight games without a win. Obviously, the last time we won, we beat Crawley at home. And then uh, that was b before we went on to play against Tottenham. So uh, so if anything, no, it's a nine-game winless run if you consider all competitions. So uh, we're well overdue a win. Um, it, it, this week is bringing a bit of significance to us because obviously uh, yesterday was the anniversary of the sacking of Graham Wesley and um, uh, bringing in Michael Flynn as caretaker manager obviously the start of the great escape followed on from there but then this fixture last year was Graham Wesley's first match in charge of us and it absolutely hammered down and we all got soaked so uh, the weather don't look too promising Ranger. Right let's hope it's a bit brighter when we get down to Yeovil so in the back, I'm going to speak to Terry first. Terry, what's your thoughts on our form lately? Sorry, on the form? The form lately, yeah. Um, well, we seem to be on a long angle. I'm uh, angle over at the moment from the Spurs game. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult to say, really. I think um, Flinny is doing a grand job there, but there's use of substitutions, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm not up to scratch at the moment. I mean, Forest Green um, last week is substitution to David back as soon as they came on yeah. and you know I think that's what tore the game like with us um, I don't know if some people we got on the bench or what it is I don't know mm. um, the other thing is Josh here might uh, very strange yeah, at the minute I don't know what's happening with Josh um, everybody was so excited when um, including myself yeah. uh, when he signed and you know you're on the way back at the turn of the year but for some reason um, reason unknown to us obviously that you know he's not being used yeah that's been a thought but um, I'm sure we'll um, we wait to need all games now um, left the full way I think it is I'm sure we'll um, secure our, our um, thing in the league two now in the next couple of games and hopefully then with that, with that money off our back we can push back yeah. on Chris you know? I mean as far as staying up is concerned I think uh, a win today will uh keep us there but I don't think there's any real immediate threat of relegation no, this no, season no no there's not immediate effect it's nice to get that magic 50 points and just all they know just to yeah. say you know, we, we are going to be safe you know and perhaps that will just lift us a little bit you know and um, we are playing bad football I mean no the, no no the first half well the first half was quite well, exciting that has been yeah I, I think I think we have been playing bad football up until the Forest Green game but I don't know why but our attacking football was um, was much better with the link up play between Hayes and Amond, but I, I don't get why we decided to sit back then. And then when we took Hayes off, we put Jackson on fair play. And um, I, I am a fan. I am a potential Jacko fan. If he starts scoring some goals, there's got to be something about that guy. And I, and I say, say this over and over: three managers have backed him. There's got to be something about him. But I don't get the tactics in the second half trying to protect a one-goal lead. Especially when we were the more we were the brighter attacking team. Yeah, it seems to happen a lot, Chris. It's, it's not the first time it's happened in these games that mm. we sat back and we lost a game. I mean, the, the main tip example was Barnett, I thought, you know, you know, one of the crews in the game, and all of a sudden then we sit back and they, and they scored two goals. Yeah, in a I match remember that. Before that, I don't think he had won mm. 15 games, you know. The, the thing with Barnett, that was like the one down uh, uh, amongst uh, a lot of ups for us, considering. The, the amount of dames we've gone through the two seasons previous to that yeah but um, we've been having a lot of dames lately uh, we haven't been losing at home at least that's the only saving grace because all of our losses have been away away to Mansfield away to Lincoln yeah, and away yeah. to Colchester yeah. so uh, we, we stopped the rod at home to, uh, obviously the losing rod uh, yeah. against um, Notts County we stopped the losing away rod against Port Vale um, we drew a game we should have won I mean they, I mean, the, the one defence for our, our, our team is that we would have embarrassed them if it wasn't for their goalkeeper with the Forest Green game I feel yeah yeah but, um, yeah I, I think we, you know, we, we're going to be alright I think we win you know more games than we lose though for the rest of the season yeah I think um, so so 
Yeah, I'm quite happy. I mean, we're in a good position. We know like we were last year, and you know, I think we did. I think we did a bit uh, hand off, you know, but it was just where we are now. Yeah, absolutely. It's progress, isn't it? At the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't want to try and do too much too soon. We want to make it steady and, and make yeah. it sustainable. And yeah. But uh, I was going to say, we've already got three away. After the day, we've got three away games left, and that's it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. So there's only one more this month. There's one in April, yeah. and then the final one is in uh, the only game in May, and that's away at Carlisle. Oh, the yeah. other two, obviously, uh, Chesterfield and Barnet. And I really hope to God that when we get to Barnet, we could be the ones to relegate Graham Wesley. Yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be great. And I tell you yeah. what, you get a lot of county fans will travel down for that, because that would be a spectacle yeah. for us. I'd love it. So, Stag, you're quiet there, mate. Do you want to weigh in on anything? What's your thoughts of us at the moment? Feel free to lean over and, and expose yourself to the camera sorry. if you want. I'm sorry, what? No, no, I didn't say quite right, did it? Um, expose your face. It's just, um, it's not good, really, is it? It's, really, you know, it's, like, it's, a, it's a winless run. Yeah. It's nine games without a win. Yeah, um, we don't want to make it ten. Cameras jumped back. Let's get this pointing at us again. There we go. That's better. Yeah, so, um, well, obviously the, the game today, and uh, who yeah. we'd like to see play in the game today, obviously as well. We got to cover. So um, Labardi's back. Yeah. Um, who are you going to start up front? Uh, it's uh, the, the point that I made last time is that uh, on, on on one of my recent blogs is that right, the the whole month of February we didn't score a single goal. But the starting the starting attack has only changed once. So now we've gone with a fresh attack. We scored three goals. Do we stick with that same attack because there's goals in it, or do we change it up again? Has, has Flynn yeah. got a plan for the oval defenders? Stay with the, yeah, stay with the current. It's easy as Flynn. Easy as Flynn. Yeah, definitely stay with the easy and uh, come on. Hayes and Amon to start the front. So obviously Day is goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, what kind of defensive lineup would you like to see? Would you like to see five or four at the back? Do you think uh, four? I think, I think it'll be five away. Mm -hmm. Away game, yeah, I'd imagine five, they'll be the five. five. I think it was that with Butler, um, yep. like yep. White, Fabio, and Ryan. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Be back five. And, uh, don't get me wrong, I like Wilmot, I just don't like him as a central midfielder. So if no. it was me choosing the team today, my central midfield would be. First of all, I wouldn't start with Dolan. It's against his old club. And um, whenever we get players who play against old clubs, for us, they never, ever tend to have a good game. When it's the other way round, when it's our old players playing against us, they always play a blinder. But when it's when it's our old player, but when it's our players playing against their old clubs, they always play poorly. So I wouldn't go with Dolan today for that reason. Um, I'd go with Sheehan. Yeah, I'd definitely go with Sheehan. If he's apparently he's fit and ready, according to Sheehan, he's fit and ready. According to Flynn, he's fit and ready. So if Sheehan's fit and ready, why the hell is he not playing? Exactly. So we got to get Sheehan in that team with Labardi, and um, I would play Ben Tozer in that midfield as well. Yeah, I quite agree. I'm great to have Labardi back. We do miss him. Yeah. I was you know, I think if he'd have been playing last week, I think we'd have played. Mm. Simply, he was playing like we do miss him. Yeah, that's I just it. Hope, I just hope we can sign him by the end of the season. Yeah, but um, I, I've heard a rumour that he has signed a contract, but then uh, there's some complications with it, uh, and that's why it's not. That's why it's not um, being announced at the moment. Right. Okay. But um, if, if if we sign him on for another season, there's a good chance signing on to a contract could mean that he, <laughs> he he could end up moving for money in the summer, yeah, which yeah. we couldn't we, we can't really turn down at no, the moment. No. But uh, that's the thing. I mean, I think outside of our usual turnover, we've made we've made about a million pounds this season. Obviously, with the cup run, with the cup run, and obviously uh, uh, the uh, the sell on clause for Lee Evans and yeah. from Wolves to Sheffield United. I think we made just over hundred k for that. So uh, there's been around about a million plus that we've made. Obviously, a lot of people didn't take into account um, the Crawley game and how many people we had at that match. I think we made about 100k because of all the additional ticket sales for that game. Because obviously you had to get into the Crawley game to guarantee yourself a top ticket. 
So things are looking good for the future. Uh, we may have a little bit of extra money to throw into the playing budget next season. So when it comes to signing that striker, because they're always the most expensive players, they're always the highest earners. And there you see on the back, Lincoln's success on the back of signing Matt Green, who we were linked with. Yeah. I mean, James Collins was available and Luton got him. So if we got that extra bit of money to get that striker, you tend to find that the better teams are the ones with the, with the goal scoring strikers. Um, Danny Rose for Mansfield, for example. Yeah. yeah. And they got Grant and uh, Shaw Ramiobi scoring goals and um, John Stead scoring goals for Notts County. Oh, yeah. So the successful teams have got the, the, the good strikers scoring the goals. So uh, we got Amond, who's a poacher. What we need is uh, the kind of striker that will just create a goal out of nothing. Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. you know, somebody like Hayes will be a younger, child, a younger fella like him. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's got I've no ways. Because for me personally, I was fooled into thinking it, as were many. Um, Newblade was going to be that striker that could create something out of nothing. But he drifts yeah. out to the wing. He's lazy. And I, I just think he's got all the ability in the world because he was a Premier League player once before. He was, yeah. yeah. He was a Premier League player. He's got all the ability in the world, but but um, whether it's an attitude problem, whether he can't apply his ability correctly in a match, or whether he's just outright lazy or unfit or always unfit, yeah. Or whether it's complacency because he knows where he's come from, and yeah. being in League Two, he should be the daddy of it all. But I don't know, time will tell. So, uh, any final thoughts, gentlemen, before we uh, wrap this? Uh, no, I think I think I think we win. For a win. Yeah, I think we, I think we'll definitely win today. I think yep. we be, I think we'll take three points today, and hopefully you know, we can push on for the rest of the season. Don't get our get the you know, secure in the league like and push yep. on for the rest of the season. So, score. We'll, we'll end on a score prediction then. I go in. I just did my neck out today. Say three one to McCarthy. Okay. Stack. Uh, 1 0 County. And I'm agreeing with Terry on that one. I'm saying 3 1. Leanne, want to weigh in with something? No, she's shaking her head. That'll be that then. So uh, here we go on the Yeovil. Let's see if we can uh, end this winless run. So uh, up the County. Up the County.